It is neither the strongest nor the most intelligent species which survive. It is those which know how to adapt to change. Darwin's theory is illustrated perfectly by one of this century's major public health issues, the resistance of bacteria to antibiotics. Antibiotics that were the great medical revolution of the 20th century. The first antibiotic to be identified was penicillin. In 1928, Alexander Fleming returned from holiday to find his bacterial specimens contaminated by a fungus. The fungus, Penicillium notatum, had stopped the bacteria reproducing. And so, the first antibiotic, penicillin, was born. However, the discovery would only begin to be exploited on a massive scale after World War II. In 1932, the first synthetic antibiotic, a sulfur compound called prontosil, was developed. It was something of a miracle, as many diseases previously considered fatal could now be cured. Within a few years, the pharmaceutical industry went on to invest considerable sums and many other antibiotics were developed. In the 1970s, the medical world was confident that it had access to a full range of antibiotics. But gradually, it was discovered that each new antibiotic leads to resistance. The first resistance to penicillin appeared three years after it came on the market, and to prontosil, just under six years. Whereas global consumption of antibiotics continues to grow, the development of new antibiotics is stagnating. At long last, the world is becoming aware that antibiotic resistance is a major public health issue. In 2014, the World Health Organization published its first report sounding the alarm on antibiotic resistance and the lack of data on less developed countries. Antibiotic resistance is one of the 21st century's biggest public health issues. According to the World Health Organization, the world is entering a post-antibiotic era and the smallest of cuts or a common infection could become fatal. Antibiotic resistance already results in 700,000 deaths annually, and the number of victims could reach 10 million by 2050 if nothing is done. In the United States, Staphylococcus aureus, the champion of resistant bacteria, kills more people annually than AIDS. Antibiotic resistance knows no borders. Those infected by a resistant bacterium can transmit it, and therefore the resistant gene, to people around them. In 2010, a new hyper-resistant bacterium, NDM1, was identified in a patient in the UK who had undergone surgery in India. Medical tourism, migrations, and population displacements in conflict situations all play a role in increasing antibiotic resistance. The phenomenon affects all countries, but not to the same degree. In Norway and Sweden, the proportion of resistant Staphylococcus aureus is less than 1%, whereas in Southern Europe it's over 25%. These disparities are the result of different prevention strategies, accidental importing of resistant bacteria, and more or less controlled management of antibiotics. In developing countries, there is little data available due to the lack of systematic surveillance. Shigella, acute gastroenteritis, is caused by infection by Shigella bacteria. In Thailand, resistance of the Shigella bacterium to one of the most commonly used antibiotics rose from 10% to 90% in just 10 years. Nigeria is a textbook case. In 1986, some pathogenic strains of the Escherichia coli bacteria were insensitive to six antibiotics in 1.6% of cases. Twelve years later, 
This percentage had increased tenfold. Inappropriate prescribing or incorrectly dosed drugs are often the cause of increased resistance. Again, in Nigeria, in 2002, over 95% of hospitalized patients were put on two or three antibiotics as a matter of course, while only 5% of them had been tested to determine which antibiotic was best adapted to their particular case. Antibiotic resistance isn't an illness, but it is a major public health issue. Antibiotic resistance is when bacteria multiply, despite the presence of an antibiotic. Some bacteria are naturally resistant to certain antibiotics, while others that are usually antibiotic sensitive can become resistant. There are two mechanisms that may explain this phenomenon. In the first case, the chromosome that carries the bacteria's genetic material mutates for no reason. Antibiotics work by targeting specific sites in bacterial cells. But when a bacteria's chromosome mutates, the target sites are modified, thereby preventing the antibiotic from binding with the bacteria to destroy it. When resistant bacteria multiply, the antibiotic resistance gene is transmitted to their clones. In the second case, the bacteria use another tactic to resist antibiotics. When resistant bacteria encounter non-resistant ones, even of a different strain, they can transmit their resistance gene. In both cases, when antibiotics are overused or used incorrectly, they become selective. When an antibiotic is present, resistant bacteria multiply, while so-called antibiotic-sensitive bacteria are destroyed. A person infected with resistant bacteria can transmit them, and therefore the resistant gene, to people around them. Hospitals are high-risk environments due to the risk of infection during and after surgery and patients' lowered immunity. Resistant Staphylococcus aureus bacteria is a major concern for hospitals as it can compromise many treatments. Patients risk developing a life-threatening infection such as septicemia or blood poisoning. Widespread use of antibiotics in livestock is partly responsible, as resistant bacteria found in meat are transmitted to humans. The antibiotic aviparsin, used to stimulate growth in animals, is responsible for the worldwide development of resistance to vancomycin, its equivalent used to treat humans. Vancomycin is one of the few remaining antibiotics that is effective against Staphylococcus aureus. Hospitals are the primary sites for the proliferation and transmission of resistant bacteria. Contamination frequently occurs via the hands of healthcare staff. Our mass consumption and sometimes misuse of antibiotics also contributes to the development of resistance. Doctors, worried about possible complications, almost systematically prescribe antibiotics for a simple sore throat, when in fact, 70% of sore throats are caused by viruses, and antibiotics won't be effective. And this, despite the fact that a reliable, rapid diagnostic test exists. To reduce the risk of resistance, doctors should carry out additional tests. Using culture and sensitivity, the bacteria causing the patient's infection can be isolated. The bacteria is grown and then covered with small discs impregnated with antibiotics. If the bacteria stops growing, the antibiotic is effective. Using these results, the doctor will know which antibiotic to prescribe for the patient. 
The treatment is long. It's six weeks of intravenous antibiotics, then another four weeks of oral antibiotics. The patients who come here undergo multiple operations, and the choice of antibiotic is frequently very limited, because the infections we're treating are caused by multi-drug resistant bacteria. So we have to use antibiotics of last resort, ones that we use specifically for these bacteria. If the antibiotics of last resort don't work, and the bacteria prevents the bone consolidating, the last option is amputation. But sure, we need to reduce the use of antibiotics to slow the development of antibiotic resistance. But we won't be able to stop the development of resistance because it's a dynamic process. On one hand, you have these ever-changing living organisms, and on the other, patients who are infected with these living organisms and who need to be treated. So one of the first options is to take old medications and to chemically modify them, to make new medications that can attach themselves to modified targets or that can resist enzymes that would otherwise destroy them. A second possibility is to create entirely new medications, ones that don't exist yet, synthetic antibiotics which, unlike many natural products, have a number of side effects. It takes longer to get them onto the market, and there are many more dead ends, but it is a real option. Another possibility is to use phages. In a nutshell, phages are species of virus capable of finding receptors on bacteria. And once they penetrate into the bacteria, the viruses multiply and the bacteria burst. So some of them are bacteria killers. And we're looking to create phages that will kill the bacteria that have somehow infected the body. I don't think we will overcome resistance, but I think that we can live with resistance. Every time a new antibiotic or means of control is developed, the bacteria will seek to defend itself and will find a new way to resist. But this is all over a span of time. So we have to find new antibiotics, new methods of control, and use them in the best possible way, so that the bacteria don't adapt too rapidly and at the same time have systems in place that limit the spread of resistance. So, if you have a public health system that includes the best possible hygiene measures, and you use antibiotics in the best possible way, and not too frequently, it will allow the pharmaceutical industry and scientists to find different means to fight antibiotic resistance. But bacteria won't disappear, because if you don't have bacteria, your metabolism won't work.